What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Minnesota Twins franchise on MLB The Show 18, the last episode on this game, but the series will be moving to MLB The Show 19, even after the Minnesota Twins successfully completed a World Series run. This was the first year in the series we made it to the postseason, and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into with this, having such an amazing run, amazing series against the Red Sox and the Dodgers, an easier one against the Angels. It was a lot of fun, and I still intend to continue the series because I still want to see what happens with a lot of the young players that haven't had long careers yet on this team. Players like Maxwell Fowler were part of the first draft class, but we've only seen Max play for two years. There's Gary Tadano, we've only seen him play for really one year, and I'd like to see more of a career for these players. So today what I want to do is just recap the season a bit, talk about where the series is at, where it's going to be going, and then also talk about how the offseason will be live streamed on the channel tomorrow afternoon, and then it's on to year 5 and MLB 19. Definitely looking forward to it. The entire time, I've been trying to get us back to the postseason in this series, and we had a pretty good year two, but then after making so many good additions in year three with Paul Goldschmidt, Dallas Keuchel, Charlie Blackman, Josh Harrison, and others, we only got better by four wins. Baseball's like that sometimes, and after last season, we get four wins better and finally finish 92 and 70 and that was good enough to win the AL Central for the first time only by two games. And we had some really tough competition from Cleveland and Chicago. The White Sox look like they are for real, and for the rest of the series, I think they're going to be a really big problem. I wish they didn't completely replace the stats with just playoff numbers, but I can still go through player by player and show you what happened this season. Paul Goldschmidt was probably our best player in year three, and he really helped boost the offense. Goldschmidt this season came back with another 30 home run season. His average did go down, his on-base percentage did go down. Perhaps we're seeing kind of Paul Goldschmidt's career start to tail off a little bit. He is 32. Baseball prime is different than other sports, but at least this season, a lot of these numbers did get worse. Strikeouts, on base, OPS, slugging, you name it. But he's still really good. This year, I think our best offensive player was Miguel Sano. He has had two amazing years back to back, highlighted by this year's 50 home run season. 131 runs batted in, which I know is not necessarily a stat you should put really a lot of value in, but. He still drove in 131, we get on base a lot, we score a lot. 294 average, 628 slugging, really good OPS. I think that Sano finally became the player these last couple years that we were hoping for, and that's right ahead of free agency. And that's going to probably be the biggest topic of the offseason. Can we keep Miguel Sano? Do we keep Miguel Sano? And what do we do from a salary standpoint with having a lot of big contracts on this team? We brought in Nelson Cruz as kind of a last second DH addition a couple years ago, and that was a really big move. I don't think we'll bring him back next season. I'm expecting him to retire, which I think would make sense after winning the World Series and playing really well and getting older. But Cruz this year had his home run number go down to 23. He did play a little less games, but it looks like his home run per at bat would definitely be lower. Still really quality power hitter, and I really enjoyed putting him on this team. I've been so patient with Byron Buxton in this series because I know what the upside is, and we've seen it this year. Byron Buxton is a really, really well-rounded player now in this series. He hit 266 this season, showed a little bit of power, but really it's all about his fielding ability and how he can get extra base hits. 34 doubles, 7 triples. I really enjoy having Buxton on the team, and I think we're finally going to see him have that high-level offense that we've been looking for. And thankfully, he's been under contract now for a while, and he still will be. All series long, who have we been waiting for to make an impact? Nick Gordon. This year, it was his chance, finally. Josh Harrison was a good second baseman, 
but it was time to move on and give Gordon the chance to play that spot, and he did so really well. He hit 266 this season. I thought his offense was really good, and it was pretty big that he did bring good offense because we just don't have many left-handed bats in the lineup. I like to add more. Jorge Polanco is still only 26 years old, continuing to get better, and he has three years in a row of pretty solid average, and we're still seeing his numbers get better as he plays more. So I think if you look at the jump from when he played 132 games in 2018 to playing 139 in 2020, pretty good leap there and still room to improve, but only one more year of arbitration. Charlie Blackman has been our leadoff hitter for a couple seasons. This year, he didn't start out very well and had to work his way back up the lineup. But once his hitting got on track, he had a pretty good season again, but I also think his career might start winding down a little bit. The numbers did go down, but thankfully, still, he's been reliable and came through really big in the postseason. He had the walk-off winner to seal the ALCS, and overall... Our offense did an amazing job in the playoffs. Yasiel Puig was the main addition last offseason, and his season really did not go how I had planned. And there were a lot of people that wanted me to trade him at the deadline or trade him this coming offseason. And then what happens? His postseason all of a sudden turns around when we make it to the World Series. He wins World Series MVP. He homers in four straight games. And that definitely makes things a little more difficult to handle moving forward with all these great players that are going to make big money and that includes Michael Conforto who we did acquire at the deadline partially because the hitting from Puig wasn't great and we could use another bench bat anyway so Conforto comes in and there was a suggestion at one point in the comments that said hey let's play him at DH against righties and so I try that first game home run and from there on out that was his role and he clobbered a bunch of home runs, including in the postseason, and really came through in that Boston series. And now he's a free agent, and I know everybody's going to want to keep him around. Mitch Garver has been the everyday catcher now for a little while, and I think that he's a solid offensive player. I like catchers that can bring a little offense and aren't just going to be guys who bat ninth and hopefully play good defense. Garver's actually a better hitter, I'd say, than defender, which doesn't always work out he doesn't block pitches in the dirt very well so i have to be very careful when i'm going for those two strike curveballs but garver overall solid player i do think that going forward we can make our bench a little bit better taylor motter was the bench utility guy this year and really didn't bring a ton to the team there was one stretch during the season where he had a bunch of home runs so he has 10 but overall his defense is probably his best ability in the fact that he plays like six positions. And that's okay. Kurt Suzuki is regressing, so I don't think he'll be the backup catcher next season. But that will be a position that I look to address in the offseason. Johnny Sandoval made it to the active roster. I think he'll be there again next season. And we'll see if he can be that bench outfielder and maybe work his way into a starting role eventually. One of the reasons why our World Series season was possible is because the starting pitching has gotten so much better. Dallas Keuchel was the big addition a couple seasons ago, and he's had two fantastic years now with the Twins. 17 wins, 18 wins, and how about the postseason? 3-1 record, 40 innings in the postseason, allowing a total of 4 earned runs. That's 1 every 10 innings. Maxwell Fowler was the very first draft pick in the series, and he's also played an important role in getting this team better. Fowler is still developing. He's only 20 years old. He can still get a lot better, but we've seen him post good ERAs. He doesn't allow a lot of hard contact. I wish it would actually show stuff like that here in the stats, but when I pitch with him, they really can't do a whole lot with it. With Fowler, we know he's never going to be an elite strikeout pitcher, so I wonder like what his ceiling really is, but as long as he gets out, there's no issue. Gary Tadano became a starter this season. He almost won Rookie of the Year. He posted really good numbers for a first season, and he does have more strikeout upside. So I've been asked a lot who I think could be better after a few years, Fowler or Tadano. I think Tadano's ceiling's higher, given the strikeout upside. 
Mike fulton is also a solid starter. I don't know if he'll be on the team going into next season. And there's also Yadier Alvarez. We got him back in the Brian Dozier trade, and that trade has definitely been worth it. Alvarez has gotten better pretty much every year he's been a full-time starter. And this season especially, it was really fun to play games with him. The control has gotten better, and check out the war numbers. He's been over three every season. Overall, the bullpen still wasn't fantastic this year. We had to make a couple moves to change out closers, bring in Arotis Vizcaino. We had to send down Will Smith down the AAA. We never saw him make it to the bigs again. So it was tough to manage, but we did it. And we did so with only one consistent lefty pitcher, and that was Aaron Loop, who had a 2-3-2 ERA this season. Pretty much his job was to face lefties. Tony Watson was also in that role, just he was really inconsistent. The ERA looks good, the whip looks good, but I know that Watson had some really bad outings too. Overall, we could still use some development in our bullpen, but we just won the World Series. That's a huge accomplishment. Really happy about it. It's the first World Series I've ever won, and it was a really memorable playoff run. I will definitely remember this one. I didn't know that we could actually make it as far as we did. I thought the Boston series would give us a lot of trouble, and it went to a Game 5. I wasn't as worried against the Angels, but I was definitely worried against the pitching of the Dodgers, and I thought their offense would also provide a lot of problems because they just have so many good lefties, but the pitching was so good, and the offense got going when they had to. Yasiel Puig wins the MVP, and that is it for this season quite memorable that was fun obviously having the success that we've had morale is doing really well on the team there's only one player who's angry and that's will smith obviously this season wasn't what he wanted after 19 innings he went to triple a if we look at our budget i think we're actually in decent shape perhaps to re-sign miguel sano we'll have to see Obviously, balancing salaries in MLB is interesting because every team kind of spends a little differently. You have to work around a budget and see what fits. Paul Goldschmidt's going to be very expensive, and maybe he's starting to wind down. And then there's Yasiel Puig, who is signed to a long deal. Do we want to keep him? Here are the free agents that we have, though, going into this offseason. Sano, Iglesias, Loop, Conforto. Fernando Romero is hitting free agency. Tyler Duffy, who's been like our best long reliever the entire series. Kevin Quackenbush. I know he's a 78 overall, but I mean, we know how valuable he was this season. There's a chance our team looks a lot different next year, and it all depends on how we're able to handle the salaries. I think that signing Miguel Sano has to be the top priority. But after that... There are going to be some tough decisions because we can't sign everybody and keep everybody we already have. I'm hoping that Michael Conforto doesn't want a huge contract because I'd love to keep him on the team. I'd also like to keep Puig and see if we can have a better year too. I think that his defense is really good. I love his arm. Out in right field, his arm can save a fair amount of runs and I really like having him on the team. I know that my hitting with him has been inconsistent, but I think that it's worth waiting another year to see how things go. And his contract, I mean, it's a lot of money. It's the second biggest salary on the team, but I still think that we should wait it out another year. You can let me know what you think about how we should manage the salaries going into next year. It is definitely going to be a challenge. I'm still fairly new to these MLB off seasons, given that I haven't played much franchise, but this is a scenario I just haven't really been in. I've been building up a team this entire time. I've never had to worry about keeping it together. Obviously, our cash flow looks good. I think plus two and a half million a week is solid. I think you just have to have it be profitable. And in that case, we should be able to add a lot more to salaries. Now, for the rest of the series, I would like to speed up the pace. We've now seen the Twins ascension to the top of the major leagues to win the World Series. So, I want seasons to go by a lot quicker moving forward. I want to see more development, and I want to make some progress. I don't plan on taking the Twins past MLB 19. 
Obviously, if we make it to the postseason again, which I hope we do, we will take our time through the playoffs because I really enjoyed how I handled those episodes. It was a really fun way to go about it. But obviously, it's time to speed things up, focus more on some of these players that we're trying to develop, and simulate a lot more at a time, I feel. I know last season we didn't spend much time looking at the minor league players very much, but there are some really promising ones like Vernon Ozuna. I wish it kept track of minor league numbers here. Next time the minor league season ends, I should save that stuff so I can refer to it later on. But we have some intriguing players that could make an impact in the next couple years. I'm still hoping that Jose Barrios can join the starting rotation at the big leagues. Obviously, his development in real life has gone way differently, but I'm still trying to stay patient with it because the upside is certainly there. There's a good chance we see Sandy Bunty join the Major League bullpen next year. We've got to get more consistent there. I think it's finally his time. Andres Valdez definitely has a chance. He did get a little Major League playing time, and hopefully next year he is even better. And then hopefully we see some of the offensive players also work their way up. Chuck Bearden being one of them. He hits power off lefties really well. So that's definitely something that's always intrigued me. I love standout skills like that. There's of course Alex Kirloff who has been a little inconsistent in our minor league system. So he hasn't risen as fast as I thought he would. There's Ray Lowry who's a good contact hitter especially off righties. The potential has gotten better for players like Carmen Ojeda. He might be on the active roster day one next season. Ojeda played down at AAA this year, did really well, made it to the All-Star game, I'm pretty sure. And there is also another player, Ty Gonzalez, may be the DH next season. He was one of these players I drafted who was like a really high overall to begin with, but had lower potential. But I mean, look at the hitting ratings. We have the DH here in the American League, so we're going to use it. And Ty Gonzalez can take over for Nelson Cruz, I think, next year. You know that I enjoy the development of young players and the journey they take here in these series. So that's one of the main reasons why I want to continue the series. I also don't like ending a series without, like, knowing that it's about to end. Just because we win the World Series doesn't, to me, mean it's over. Because it's more about just winning that for me. One more player to remember for next season, Bravik Valera. I've been looking for a really good utility player for a long time. Taylor Motter played that role this year, but I want to see Bravik Valera. 99 plate vision with that contact. Are you kidding me? That's always stood out. It's always been impressive, and I can't wait next year to have him at spring training and to see what he can do. If we check out the top prospects in baseball, the White Sox aren't done getting better. Miguel Vaccaro, one of their draft picks from the series, is the top prospect in baseball. This team is really going to be good next year, and it's not a guarantee we can return to the playoffs because of them. And they gave us so many issues this season. I think we have some promise in our farm system, but we don't really have top prospects, apparently. I think Ojeda and Gonzalez should get some recognition, even Barrios, but we don't get anybody here in the top 36 prospects. Why don't we actually take a look at the White Sox this season, who were a handful of games behind us in the standings. I believe it was eight. They just didn't finish the year strong. It reminded me of our year three, where we were awesome. Playoff team if the season ended near the All-Star break, but you still got to play out the rest of those games, and it's a grind. And the White Sox just couldn't handle it this year. They had a bad September, from what I remember, and they didn't finish strong, so... They might be on a similar path to us, which means they'll be really good next season. Anthony Rizzo was their big addition in this last offseason. His year, though, wasn't spectacular. 19 homers, 282 average. They're good numbers, but they're not elite. They're not like $25, $30 million numbers. Yoan Moncada has become the star they hoped for. I believe they got him in the Chris Sale trade, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, he's one of the best. I know he played well against us. I'm sure we haven't seen the best of his offense being that he's only 24 years old. So next year, definitely keep an eye on him. 
they have other players with a potential as well. We talked about Miguel Vaccaro. There's still Lucas Giolito, Michael Kopech, Carson Fulmer, Claudio Alvarez down at double A. This team's going to be really stacked eventually. Wow. I still expect Cleveland to be really good. They have good pitching, and that's always going to carry you pretty far. We'll see as far as their offense, what they decide to do this offseason. They do have a lot of players here who are older, so they're going to have to make some moves eventually. We haven't talked much about Detroit in this series, and that's because they're just not a very good team. They have a couple good starting pitchers. Miguel Cabrera is still there, but overall this team still has a lot of rebuilding to do. But who knows, if they make a couple big signings, maybe they can make something happen. Justin Verlander down to a 72 overall, and that's a lot of salary. Dealing with salaries like this on aging veterans can really hold you back. And then the Kansas City Royals. Their top player is Salvador Perez, and their pitching is not great. They've got to find starting pitching, and fast, and a lot. I think that about covers it today then. I really enjoyed this season and this series has become one of my favorites. I know I asked a lot of you on Twitter not long ago what your favorite series was of mine at the moment and a lot of you said it's the Minnesota Twins franchise and it's been you know a series I've been trying to get more comfortable with and just to get better at making baseball content and I feel like I've been doing my best basically the last handful of months finding the right format and putting out fun episodes and I can't wait to go through another season and to continue this Twins franchise. I know that I've talked about maybe never doing another franchise on the show again, but I think there's a chance now that I do try to do something similar with another team at some point in the future, but our journey here with Minnesota is not done. So thank you all for watching. I'd love to see your feedback down in the comment section on what you think we should be doing this offseason. Please leave a like if you are enjoying the series, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all tomorrow with some Twins offseason action. Have a great day.